Hi, I'm Ryan Von Fiedler, and if you saw my first video, you might notice that my lighting this time isn't total crap! I've actually been watching some other internet video reviewers and taking a few tips here and there. There's one thing I see from internet video game reviewers that I just cannot abide by, and that's when they take a video game without multiplayer and penalize it for that. Now, I think that's a particularly dangerous attitude. Part of the reason that the first four years of this generation were as bad as they were is because every game had to have multiplayer and had to have state-of-the-line graphics. Now that took resources away from a good, strong, single-player campaign. Now the corollary of this rule, of course, is that if a game is meant to be entirely multiplayer, it should not be punished for not having a single-player element. After all, there are many players who love multiplayer just by itself. And if the game sells to those people, that's the game makers satisfying their target audience. Then you have a game like Brink, where the entire selling point is that you have a single player campaign where your buddies can jump in on your side or against you. And hey, that sounds fun, right? That hasn't been done. Here's a problem. The single player campaign in Brink, it's a lie! And here's why. The AI is bad. The AI is beyond bad. Now, I love bots in my multiplayer shooting games. I am a child of Perfect Dark and Time Splitters. But it's like we haven't had bots for so long in our shooting games, we forgot how to do them without them being completely retarded. Now, this is very important because this is an objective based game, and just in case you didn't know that, there's a tutorial that tells you that this is an objective based game. In fact, it says. If you're a console gamer, you should watch this tutorial because you don't understand objective-based gameplay like PC gamers do. Yeah, because us console gamers have never played an objective-based game before. Not like, uh, oh, Assassin's Creed, there were no objectives in that game. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Grand Theft Auto? I didn't have missions in that game. Hmm, let's see, Red Dead Redemption? Nope. Bioshock? No, it was just kind of get from uh, one end of the game to the other. Hmm, uh, no, just solve four, no. Oh, wait! How about some, um, uh, Mag! The console only game that you stole half of your ideas from, Brink. Now, since this is an objective based game, it's not enough that your teammates can't shoot, that you have to entirely carry them through the game. No. Because this is an objective based game, there are certain classes that have to be in certain areas at certain times. And not only are they not there, but your entire team is going to be choke pointed in a big cluster of annoyance in one of the game's many poorly designed levels. This game sucks. That's the first thing I think about this game. That's the first and second and third and fourth thing I think about this game. This is a game where, as I'm playing it, I just think to myself, this game sucks. When I'm not yelling, this game sucks! And it's a real shame because there are a lot of things I like about this game. There are a lot of things that make me say, boy, I wish shooting games were going in this direction. I love the character customization in this game. I don't just love it aesthetically, although the aesthetics are awesome. I like the amount of options you get for each character and for each class. Granted, there are some things that are a little unbalanced. There are some things that should have been better thought out. It doesn't feel like this game was playtested a lot. This is actually a first-person shooter where you can min-max in. I don't know all the most broken combinations, but just looking online will show you some of them. For instance, you can be a heavy body-type medic with a Gatling gun. The problem with that is that you have to rev up the Gatling gun, and you have to stop revving it up every time you go to heal someone else. But that's not what players do. They just buff up their own health and revive themselves. Things like that are fun when you're doing them, but they're not fun when you see another player doing it. From this example alone, you will get immensely frustrated from the number of medics on a team that don't do any healing at all. Contrast this to a game like Mag where the best way to gain experience was to run around reviving down teammates. That was fun, and when you got downed, you knew that someone had your back, not in a game like Brink. Probably this game's biggest selling point is the fact that it has parkour in it. Parkour! But when it comes to level design, you get the feeling that this is all they thought about. There's a lot of things to climb and jump around on, but 
team fights kind of just end up in one big choke point where everyone's responding too fast and not a lot of progress is being made. This is really not fun when you're an attacking team and really boring when you're the defending team. But by all means, this is a game that should influence first-person shooter developers from here on out. Not only because there are a lot of good ideas that are poorly executed, but because there are a lot of terrible ideas that they should look at and say, we shouldn't do this. Parkour. Good. Choke point level design. Bad. Lots of customization. Good. Not really playtesting all that customization out. Bad. Animation and gameplay effects for getting knocked over or knocked prone. Good. Unusable AI. Bad. AI that actually gets worse as you rank up. Bad. Operatives are useless. Bad. Medics are encouraged not to heal others. Bad. Having to grind to learn the story. Bad. 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 Overall, I think the best this game could have hoped for was a 3 out of 5 game. It's the shooter of the week, and it doesn't have the polish that you'd expect from a Call of Duty game. But it doesn't even really accomplish being that shooter game of the week. It accomplishes being a stepping stone. I, I hope that's not what they were going for. Brink 2 might be an awesome game, but this one isn't. It's frustrating, and it's... it's... it's not good. I, I would give it a 2 out of 5 for diminished appeal. And I'm, I'm just done with it. Well, thanks for watching, and if you have a recommendation for a game for me to review, please leave a comment below. And how do you like those very same apple eggers?